son of a bitch here's my review for true grit now before i get to the review though oh let me stop talking like that before i get to the review though i want to say that throughout the review i was losing my breath a little bit here and there because i am sick i have a stuffed nose and that means i can't breathe through my nose usually so uh yeah that's why i keep losing my breath a lot that's what that's why so let's go on straight to the story of true grit son of a bitch Okay, now the story of True Grit follows this character named Maddie Ross. She's a 14-year-old girl who pretty much witnessed her father being killed. And they don't really talk about her actually witnessing it, but whatever. Let's just say she witnessed it. And really, she's just a uptight little girl who thinks she's all badass and all that stuff. And she really just wants this man that killed her father, Tom Cheney, dead. So she hires two people, uh... Rooster Cogburn, who is a U.S. Marshal, and Le- LeBeau, who is a Texas Ranger. And they go out and go find this man that killed her father. And that's pretty much the story, them talking to each other, blah, blah, blah. That's really the story. It's just a revenge tale. And I will talk about it a little bit more later on. But there you go. There's the story. I told you it. Whatever. <laughs> Let's go on to the pros of the film, because that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm going to do pros and cons of the film. So let's go on to the pros. Two things I really, really liked in the film, I'm going to talk about them really briefly because there's not really much else to talk about it, about them, is the soundtrack and the cinematography. The cinematography was just beautiful, breathtaking. A lot of the scenes just look fantastic because of the scene, I mean the cinematography, uh, obviously. But, uh, yeah, uh, the soundtrack is fantastic. It definitely, it definitely works with the movie. Uh, the movie you would think is really just a western. It is a western, but it's also a drama, and the music just complements that perfectly. So overall, those are two things I really liked. Another thing I really liked is the acting was just fantastic. I mean, of course, it's Jeff Bridges acting three times in two movies in the last week. And really, he's been acting. Th- if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch Tron Legacy. But really, he's been in he's been in movies three times in the last week. And what a fantastic job he does here playing Rooster Cogburn, who John Wayne made you know really famous, obviously. But uh, he was really famous from playing it because he got an Oscar. Congrats, John Wayne. You're not alive anymore, but congrats. Uh, Jeff Bridges does a fantastic job as him. I could definitely see him getting nominated, maybe even winning. I'm not really sure, but he does a fantastic job. And if he wins again, that's two times in a row he won for Best uh, Leading Actor. He's really freaking good in this. I, and I'm, I love Jeff Bridges. That's all I really got to say. Matt Damon does a fantastic job in this movie also. I don't think he's going to be nominated for anything, really. I mean, he was in the movie pretty long time, but not really... You know, he, he didn't give a oh my god performance. He just gave a good one. And don't get me wrong, if he does get nominated, then that's cool and all. But you know, there's some of the roles out there this year that I think could have been, uh, you know, could have definitely been nominated if he does get nominated. I don't think he is, but still, I mean, Christian Bale, come on, that's all I gotta say. He's gonna win Best Supporting Actor, so really, there's nothing much for Matt Damon to win besides. Nothing. Uh, so, yeah, Matt Damon does a great job, but not a Oscar-worthy role like Jeff Bridges was. Uh, Haley Stanfield, who is a newcomer, and she's uh, obviously new. Uh, she's really good in this. Definitely one of the best new performances of the year from a new actor. Really, really good. Josh Brolin is in this for about five minutes, but still, he's really, really good in this. I mean, I love Josh Brolin. Even if, even if he does stuff like uh, freaking Jonah Hex, you know, I still love you. I love you, Josh Brolin. Uh, so, yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite actors of all time. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I love Josh Brolin. He's a great underrated actor. And just the supporting cast, like Barry Pepper, who is... Really good in this. I mean, he's not as good as he was in his role in Battlefield Earth, which is a fantastic movie, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm not even going to say anything after that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then that's great. But, it, I mean, he, he he was good as Alex Mercer in Prototype, too. If you don't know, he voiced Alex Mercer. But, uh, you know, his role here is good, but just not as good as Battlefield Earth. Uh, <laughs> he, does, he does a good job, though. So, uh... Yeah, there's a, a, a bunch of little roles here and there, and they all do great. No one was bad in this film at all. So, overall, acting was fantastic. Another thing I like, though, 
is the dialogue. The dialogue in this film was great. It, it, I wouldn't say it's tense at all, really, because it's not really a big conversation where, oh, I'm, I'm going to kill you. No, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Who's going to pull out the gun first? Oh, no, there's no dialogue like that that makes it tense, but there is really good dialogue between each of the characters. At first, these characters hate each other, and later on, they start to like each other and all that kind of stuff. Really great dialogue. So let's go on to one more thing I liked in this film. I love the story in this film. Really, it was just fantastic. I mean, sure, it might seem like the simple revenge tale of someone trying to kill someone that hurt them in some way. But really, it's just, it's great because it's a character piece on this girl who is pretty much the main character. I mean, she's a newcomer. That's why she's not, she's not advertised like Jeff Bridges is, but she's really the main character in this film. And it's her character piece of how she thinks in the beginning she's a, uh, oh, I'm gonna kill this guy. Oh, yeah, I'm badass. I'm gonna do this. And later on, she, she really Realizes how dangerous it could be and all that stuff, and she's not really as badass as she thinks, and I really like that. I mean, I'm not going to spoil what happens at the end, but really, I love the story. So, you know what, let's go straight on to what I didn't like about the film. Just like The Fighter, there really wasn't much I didn't like about this film. I pretty much absolutely loved it. I'm not going to give it a perfect 10, to be honest, because that's a, a, li a little bit too much, but really, it's a fantastic film, just like The Fighter. If I have to say anything that I didn't like, sometimes it got a little boring, with just, sometimes it was just them riding around on a horse, just looking for them, or riding around, talking about some stuff that's never going to be brought up again, or something, and it's cool to get to know some of these characters like that, but really, it really wasn't anything we should know, but, uh, you know, it kind of got a little boring, just a little bit, but overall, I mean, it's a funny movie, it's a sad movie, it's a dark movie, I absolutely loved it, if that's the only thing I could think of that I didn't like, it gets a little boring, then I'm going to give this film a 9.4 out of 10, I really, really liked it, so there you go, there's my review for True Grit, 9.4 out of 10, definitely go check it out, screw little fuckers, go see this, so, yeah, Gulliver's Travels, no, travel to the theater to see this. Yes, I did it. So there you go. There's my review for True Grit. Bye.